Alright, what's up you guys? Time for another video. And this is a video that I should have made already because I, I really need to tell this story. Especially when I uh, made a video uh, when I was smugly, uh, in a smug way, siding with Roger Daltrey when that big article where he unexpectedly uh, blasted, you know, marijuana users. And I still seriously think even though when I was at, even if, even though I was that smug about it, I still think really even what I said in that video, which I still stand by what I said in that video and nothing has changed, but I still kind of think uh, at the same time that he didn't mean anything that big by it. But I'm still standing by what I said in the last video and uh, uh, and everything else. And if he wants to say that, I don't care. I, like I said, I man, the greatest uh, vid music video was after the fire. You know, the mic stand, damn thing. That that was epic. But, but anyway, I'm saying that as an example. But the re re the reason why I'm making this video here, trying not to laugh here too, because yes, I joke about this stuff. And, Oh, and yes, I don't care if somebody wants to smoke a little pot, if it gets legalized, just that pot. I always said that anybody that, you know, listen to reggae or Led Zeppelin or Hendrix or something back in the day, it used to be harmless back in that, the days where people listened to a little Led Zeppelin smoke pot or listen to reggae. Or, and it's just gotten to a point where I'm trying to tell you why uh, just because I think the way I do, it doesn't mean you, you're, if you're want to subscribe to me or one of my friends on here or one of some people I know in my town that smoke a little pot or have it because they're legally out to have it because they're sick that I'm against you. No, it's not like that at all. So I, I do have a disclaimer there. But yeah, just to get that out of the uh, way, but the reason what made me rebel against it and keep in mind that if you're sick of using or if you're somebody that's friends with me, don't do nothing to nobody and you smoke a little bit. I don't care. I'm not like that. And I'm not like that one stubborn woman all of a sudden I, that was on my uh, other social media, my Facebook, and knew full well that that's what I think and I'm not against them. And then she ends up that she was a, she was stalking me there and accusing me and calling me a moron and knows full well that I'm not against that's what she wants to do but was trying to intimidate and stalk me that's enough gives me another resentment too but uh put that in parentheses but okay on with the one one of the stories that actually turned me off and made me rebel and keep in mind in parentheses too I talk about the video the Roger Daltrey video that I did and this is also a response to that anybody that has an attitude, uh, I have in my head a comment that people made on that Roger Daltrey video I had. They said, quote, Who's, who, who the hell is forcing you to smoke weed? I said, well, I, and with that attitude, I'm like, that's why I'm making this too. I'm like, I'm not saying everybody is forcing me to smoke weed. I'm saying that maybe you're not like that. But I'm saying that there are people like that. Just because you're not like that, it doesn't mean that people that are like that don't exist. If you're not like that, then it's all right. But yes, unfortunately, there are people like that who try to force it down your throat. And one of the major things, a story that I should tell here is one of the things that, why I kind of resent a certain behavior would turn me off of it. Plus, I also believe in getting over. I believe in how to get over is to not have any cigarettes, nothing like that, or no beer or anything. If say in you're in a situation where you're making more money, spend it on something else to make yourself appear richer or feel richer. Or when you're poor or working a shit job, whether temporarily or just stuck in shit jobs, you can feel richer, just uh, have no habits, and that's how to get over. Yes, and the people that accuse you of all kind of things, even being on meth or jealousy, you will say that. Which, yeah, the one video I did on the one guy that accused me of uh, being on meth because I don't believe I uh, made a video against the uh, Aleister Crowley bullshit. I did look at but All well, right, on with the story. Okay, major uh, thing uh, that happened to me in one of the 
before I ended up in one better paying job that I held for 10 years, which I don't, I said, I, yes, I, one of the biggest paying things I ever made in my life, you know, that I was able to laugh in my face and smirk on my face and have long hair and nobody could do anything about it. Before that, I had this uh, job at a place called Advo where I also, in parentheses too, you know, preferred to work in industrial parks where there I could get, you know, there and people accused me of being on drugs because I refused to drive a car. Oh, and in parentheses too, if you smoke a little mo bit of marijuana and you're a hippie type and refuses to drive a car and don't do anything else, I'm with you. If it's of any consolation too, that's another story. But anyway, I worked at this, I had this one job that was closer, it was shitty minimum wage. I was comfortable there even though it was a job outside I got dirty. But my brother, you know, applied for this one other thing that was a teeny bit more an hour and a change of scenery, you know, working at a place called Advo and I went with my brother and he had a car and me and a couple of people, we rode my brother's car and, uh, but sometimes a couple of fr friends of my brother that we worked with, sometimes we went in their car. Oh, what happened too is before I ended up riding the car with my brother or anything, the place was in, a, in the industrial park close to me. I was able to walk. I was able to take the bus, do whatever the fuck I wanted because it wasn't that far. But then my brother always passed by anyway, so I went with my brother anyway or with people I worked with, but I didn't need to. But there were days where, I don't know. But what happened is this place actually decided it was going to move further out, okay? And uh, so what happened then, I wound up for a while, you know, I didn't care if my brother was going to stay at the job and these other friends out there. It was mostly my brother, right, my brother, but sometimes, you know, on and off or something, you know, but, uh, but I kind of liked it there and I, I wanted to stay at the time I had friends there and yes, there were friends that smoked a little pot here and there and they were pretty cool people, but so we ended up, I ended up, you know, almost like well, right, I have ended up being an necessity to ride with my brother or some of these people, you know. But it was mostly my brother, you know. Uh, and then it was like nights too, so it was for an industrial park. I mean, like fucking 20 miles out, you know what I mean? But I liked that some of the people there were cool, you know. Even though it wasn't even much above the minimum wage, but it was a change of scenery. I thought that that was maybe, if that was the way it was always going to be, I would have been fine with it. Well, it turned out that I think my brother moved on and went somewhere else for whatever reasons. He didn't want evenings anymore. And then, so, uh, I was friends with these other people uh, that me and my brother knew. And uh, they were okay people all their kind of ways, but they said, oh yeah, you can ride with us, just pay a little bit of gas money, right? And I was like, okay. So, uh, you know, they were all right. I didn't give a shit what they do, they, what they do outside. And there were people that, you know, that's what they do. We're nice people, nothing against them, right? But, so I was riding with them for a while. Then all of a sudden, a little bit of the time, you don't care what they do. Uh, you know, invited up by, you know, they're selling the damn shit. And their friends selling the damn shit. And uh, it ends up like... Uh, yeah, you get some of these people that, you know, a little bit of time that all they want you for is a customer to make money off of you or whatever. I didn't want to do that. I, I, can, I couldn't afford that shit. And I already, I'm the kind of guy that already had on my list all these CDs I wanted to buy, different kind of things. And I had a habit of always eating out in a restaurant that was so close to me. I lived in a rest, across from a street from a restaurant if it wasn't the shit I wanted to buy. I mean, I was the kind of guy that was working started out working a little bit above minimum wage first thing i wanted to do i pay the fucking rent or bills late and or just the, or kite checks you know just to uh eat at that restaurant because that mattered you know you know he, waitress here and there did not like you're trying to get a date would have been waitresses and people that you liked you know and then you ended up have friends that were waiter people like i would rather have that you know and that meant more to me uh than stuff like that i wanted that was my first priority was eat because i s smelled food over across there and that couldn't compete with the smell of pot thank you no offense but all right so i wouldn't buy or 
even smoke a joint with him or any kind of thing at all, right? And wouldn't go to any of these parties that kid around with me. Oh, you know what? You know, we're driving here. We might just take you anyway instead of just dropping you off. And there was a point, like, I was, like, hoping that I wouldn't have to walk home. But, you know, i seen this, um, in talking in parentheses here, I saw, when I look at yoga videos, I want to find this guy, too. There was this cool Jamaican guy that was doing yoga on a video on there. I want to subscribe to so many yoga people. He told his story like that. He was like a, a cool Jamaican and yoga guy. He had an experience where people what, tried to force marijuana down his throat. And just like this guy, he told a story where these guys did the same thing to me. They were smoking it in the car, right? And they did it on purpose, laughing in my face. We figured that I'd like to smoke or want to smoke it. And I, and just like that Jamaican yoga guy said, it didn't do nothing for me. Same with him, same with me. And I resented the idea that they were doing that show on purpose. And, on, and if that wasn't enough, uh, all of a sudden they said, well, you know, uh, to actually, to actually, if you want to keep riding with us at the job, okay, it's going to cost you this much more uh, in ga gas money to split, you know. And don't get me wrong, you can split them, you can actually be very generous, which I believe, if you were somebody I was riding in a car, I don't give a fuck if you, what you do. I'd pay half your gas money, that ain't the problem, you know, and both of us get over if you're a good friend of mine. I could be more generous, I'm not a cheap ass. But, you know, all of a sudden they were like, uh, saying, you know, ridiculous, and, well, gas prices are up too, but they were just on purpose saying that a ridiculous amount of money, trying to say oh, all the trouble it takes when we want to go home to, you know, uh, and they rolled the windows up on purpose. God forbid if the, pol the police would have stopped us all and would have been checking us all out. And the manner that that was done, you know, still to this day, I don't blame anybody that I know that smokes a joint over a little joint or, or is allowed to have it or if you want to have it legalized, you know, like our governor's trying to do or if you have it because you're sick. I still do not resent you. I don't care. That's different. But what got me is uh, that, like, this was like a bunch of years ago, but what got me turned off of it is when people want to go and do that fucking shit and pull that shit, I still don't care anybody that's nice to me that, you know, smokes that. I don't care for all that other shit that's killing people now. And yeah, you figure that, that vaping stuff that you got now is actually killing people. Before you had all that shit with the vaping things, there was... It made the news a little while that that synthetic marijuana was putting people in a hospital and killing them. There was like some synthetic uh, that, you know, uh, you would have been, yes, you would have been better off letting them have the actual marijuana. And then, then you buy that shit from people out there too. You don't know what they're putting in it. And I actually, quite frankly, no offense, I have an opinion that government sanctioned marijuana because we have states that are in debt and can't even pass a budget some years. And you put in parentheses now, tobacco originally wasn't addictive, that they're putting stuff to get people addicted. And yes, that marijuana people, you know, listen to Led Zeppelin or reggae back in the day, it wasn't addictive. You could say that cigarettes, nicotine was more addictive. But you can, you can actually prove out there that actual cigarettes and tobacco used to not be that addictive. People were putting it because people make lots of money. So you fucking think that government sanctioned marijuana or any kind of medicines out there? Come on, how come there's an explosion of all these people that are being sick? You know, even put medical marijuana or anything aside, everything from pain pills now that they're arrested, getting these doctors arrested, they gotta throw some people to the wolves now, that people were making lots of money. How come all there's people that wanna make you sick? I mean, there's a point where you might as well let people have the recreational marijuana, you know, because, but at the same time, I think, you know, government sanctioned marijuana, you know, they're going to put shit in it to either to get you addicted or trace amounts of something to make you sick. So you need more medical marijuana because you're off. Every fucking buddy that wants to make lots of money because they can't pass a budget and make it legal, government wants to say, oh, 
you can uh, you buy a lot of it from us, but as long as it's from us, but don't buy it from anybody else, you know, uh, that's what it is. Whether it's legal or illegal, somebody's making lots of money and wants you to buy more of it. Damn near anybody could be putting something in it to get you addicted to want to buy more, and then they're selling other kinds. You don't know what the, you don't even know what the fuck they're putting in. You know, you can almost argue that somebody out there did, maybe it might be, you see all this other shit out there that anybody, whether legal or legal for the government, have a government sanction, or people illegal, they're, they're putting into it. I could almost argue with some of you guys, it might be safer if you're uh, really creeped out by all this to, to have a fucking marijuana plant and smoke it yourself, grow your own. At least you know there ain't anything in it, you know? And yes, they want to have some states now. I think I was watching cops one day about this guy uh, or somebody somewhere that they got called the cops because some neighbor, they, anyway, in some states, you're legal, legally allowed to have a marijuana plant in your yard if you have a license or something, you're, for whatever medical reasons they're at. And there's some neighbor that stole their marijuana plant. I was seeing on there, if I'm not mistaken, that it's legal, that some states allow you to actually grow a limited amount of marijuana plant yourself, but you have rules you're not allowed to do this or that. I don't know. But for the sake of that argument, I could actually argue that if not to be that tinfoil hat about it, maybe if uh, some people that, you know, if you're in one of them states that's allowed to grow one or something, I don't know. Maybe it's if you think, don't tr if you don't trust anybody, maybe you're better off growing your own and at least you know nobody did not do it. Because I don't give a fuck who's what side of the tracks you're on. Somebody wants to make lots of money, they either want you to be sick you know, it's big. You can be smoking something that's medical marijuana, which, if it's helping autism, yeah, I'm all for it. But how come anybody else that does have any kind of they, that putting, you know, the marijuana aside for a minute, all kind of things, everything from psychotropics and all that, that maybe some people need? How come some of these things are causing more of the shit? I mean, I see these documentaries on Scientology, okay, that leader of that Scientologist church uh, is a little out there crazy about uh, the, all of the documentaries on Scientology, but there is one thing I do believe in that I didn't even know at the time that it was from Scientology, these videos about the Citizens Commission on Human Rights. I didn't even know it was associated with Scientology, but that, there, that I believe, even though I'm not a Scientologist, I believe with all my heart, if, if Scientology wants to be committed to that thing where exposing all these people to making lots of money that these psychotropics and all kind of other things are putting in. Yeah. If Tom Cruise wants to be a uh, Scientologist, then I can tell you some things that I agree with Tom Cruise about, you know, even though I'm not a Scientologist. But that, uh, yes, they're right. They are right about that shit is actually uh, people make lots of money and it's actually generating the opposite. It's getting people addicted and psychotropics are actually causing suicides. They're causing war vets to commit suicides, but that's some stuff that I could talk about in a whole other video. If you got this far in this video, anybody know me. But yeah, anything like that is uh, like I don't give it. But and the reason why I got that far, all this shit up telling you was actually supposed to be a separate video. But you know how it relates? Because that's how the fucking shit starts. You get somebody you work with somewhere. Oh, all of a sudden, you know, uh, you're, it's, they don't say right away you're obligated to smoke, or buy, smoke it or buy it from them. And to spend us. It's almost like a religion, another culture with these people. That's how, that's, where, that's, where, that's how it starts. I may have been off the subject shit for enough video, but that's how the fucking shit starts. If you have some friend, you don't care what they do, fine. But if you're in some position where... Anybody, yes, forces it down your throat in a way and wants to uh, hold you hostage, you know, and require you to buy a minimum amount of stuff from them or use any of it or else all of a sudden start wanting to charge you. Or if they start out by not charging you for gas, you're riding a car pulling with them, you know, they start out maybe not charging you. Oh, we're going that way anyway. And then say they start... Uh, Say in a little bit of time, well, you know what, it's, you know, we've got to charge you this a little bit. 
and you're their friends, and yes, you believe in power in both, and you just say okay. But then they start saying, well, all of a sudden, when you, uh, whether it's against your beliefs or you want to do something else with your money and you don't want to smoke a single joint with them or buy any, and all of a sudden they start get engaging in behavior and start charging you more for gas, or, or if you're in some place next to there or next to you in a click, you know, and you don't depend on from any rides, you're working next to them, you don't care. Then all of a sudden you don't spend any of your money on that, and you don't buy it from their fucking relatives that are friends that are at the damn place, and you're gonna get uh, people are gonna use the job to as a weaponize it's in the job and say you're doing something bad in a job just to screw with you and all that, then that's where I kind of draw the line, you know. That's where that's where it gets tyrannical with me, okay. It's when I regard it as being tyrannical. Some people were created as a savior, which, yeah, I'm all for it. If somebody's sick, and especially autism and seizures, if it's working, fuck yeah, I'll let them have it, you know. Let that research go on, or if somebody wants to to use it on something on their own, and you, know, you don't want to give somebody no big jail sentence just for having a joint, you know, it's that other stuff that's epidemic now that that uh, you should stay away from. It. But yeah, but yeah, like some people, yeah, they fucking ignore you or in or um, Google make sure your videos don't hardly get any views when you even imply, or people give you this look on your face or. When uh, you impl- if you imply at all that it can't get tyrannical, you get some people that all of a sudden you know the tides have turned and something is legal now, and now they can turn around and do these like well, what I call gang stalking, gaslighting. But it's, I regard it as I use that as an example, but group shaming. If you don't want to use the words gang stalking and gaslighting, it's also group shaming. But yes, it is gaslighting and gang stalking or whatever too um, like you get something or uh, this thing where we're all a collective group now and uh, they claim that they respect your right to not do something but yet you you do passive aggressive bullshit or whatever or, and um, yeah you get there's an element that we'll get tyrannical they get real bold and figure they could treat somebody else any way they want to. Uh, say if you're a Christian and you go to church, you're not into that tyrannical, fanatical Christianity and just because everybody has a ponytail or anybody does yoga is satanic. Say you're a Christian and it's against your religion to do anything and you'd rather go to church and read the Bible. And yes, you if you get harassed, you, you want to go, yeah, I, I'm with you on that. If you want to be a Christian and say you go to some workplaces or whatever and say you're some, not a Bible thumper, you say you want to just go to a church as your refuge and you got friends there, you sing. And then say you got to go to some workplace where there's those cliques and you get harassed because you're a Christian and it's against your religion or any or if, if any religion, if you're, it's against your religion to touch any of the stuff. And if they don't respect your right to not do it and they want to act like you're this or that, fuck them. Yeah, let's get real here. Yeah, if you're a Christian who believes that, and you see people in a warehouse that swear anyway, yeah, you're fucking right. I'll say that that's my attitude. But if I'm in some church where there's, I work for charities sometimes on the holidays, that I won't say it that there, but I know people of both black and white that I work next to that do swear outside of there. Nothing wrong with it. Hey, if you've got to say it that way, hey, that's the that's how they say it in the world. You're fucking right.